what was about Hazel's journey that made you want to tell this story? Oh, Hazel is a very special girl. She is a lot like myself. Um, you know, she is a quirky, introverted, but also extroverted um, little girl. She cares a lot about the world and a lot about the people around her. She wants to see everyone happy and doing well. And that is what inspired us the most to, you know, follow that direction. She is, you know, coming to Dimadelphia, which is our new city. Uh, instead of Dimsdale, Fairly Odd Parents is set in Dimadelphia. She's without her big brother, Anthony, who was her anchor, you know, and he's gone off to college now. So she has to try to, you know, find the confidence in herself to make friends and, you know, interest herself to people at school and uh, really create her own sort of you know life in Dimadelphia and so I loved that about her because I've always felt like you know for myself <laughs> you know a little nervous about making friends a little bit of social anxiety and how are people going to perceive me and how are people going to accept me um, and she's you know dealing with a lot of those internal challenges and yeah we're proud of her for well, I can't give spoilers, but yes, <laughs> that's what she's dealing with. <laughs> now, behind the scenes, you have a lot of hats. Yes. <laughs> how challenging is that, right, producer, <laughs> voice actor? How challenging is it juggling all those, you know, at the same time? It was a lot, yeah. It was my first time that I've been able to marry all of my you know, abilities into one job. So for this show, I got to be co-executive producer, co-story editor, and I wrote three episodes, and I got to voice act. Uh, and it was challenging because... I'm only one person, <laughs> and so a lot of days, you know, I would be in meetings back to back to back, whether it's design meetings or writers meetings, or maybe I'm writing my own script, but then I have to like hop in the car and go to Nickelodeon and be in the voiceover booth, but then once I get in the voiceover booth, I I'm like, you know, reading the script, and I'm like, that line should be changed, and then I have to go into writer mode and be like, we need to, you know, pitch a different line for this, and then I'd come out of the voiceover booth, and then I'd go on the other side, and I'd help, you know, Meredith Lane, our voice director director direct you know uh, the other voice actors so it was a lot of you know working different muscles um, but I think that my 12 years in Los Angeles really prepared me for it you know uh, yeah just my experience in writing as sketch improv all of that acting commercials I think all of it really you know I got to use all of that in this one position uh, voice acting is a very interesting career path because I have a lot of students that watch. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they understand that it's possible. <laughs> Honestly, uh, how would you recommend a student that maybe was interested in it break into the industry? Because it seems to be, you know, it's not as obvious as like writing or directing or something like that. Sure. Uh, so there are a couple, you know, steps you can take. First, I would say identify what kind of voice actor you want to be because there are, you know, many different ways. You could do anime, you could do commercial voice acting, you could do animation, you could do adult animation voiceover, you can do dubbing, you can do announcer, you know, roles. So I think identifying first what kind of voice actor you want to be is important. Then I would recommend going online and learning about those roles, like what does it take to do all of those because if you're voice acting in a kids animated series that's going to be totally different than if you're doing video games you know or if you're doing announcer work so learning about each of the different you know uh, fields is important then take classes so important taking classes that are specific to the actual you know uh, direction you want to go in and then once you've started taking classes, keep taking classes, because it's always important. Uh, and then after that, you know, then you can start focusing on creating like a voiceover reel or getting a voiceover agent or, you know, those kinds of things. That could take years sometimes. You know, a lot of people can be uh, trying to get a voiceover agent for many years. I got passed on tons of times before landing with my agent. So don't get discouraged. Um, you know, just know that it's a process. So respect, respect the process and respect the craft and have fun and keep taking classes and getting better. <laughs> acting, voice acting is acting. So, you know, don't try to go into it being like, I'm going to be a voice actor. Like, learn 
acting first because that's what's going to translate through your voice. 